New information on the Giga Texas expansion is revealed in today's episode. In addition, Tesla's new supercharger has been seen, and Starlink has connected Antarctica to the internet. A recent Texas filing has disclosed the planned expansion of Tesla's Gigafactory in Austin, a project that will reportedly cost Tesla $770 million. Their plans for expansion at Giga Texas, the business has already stated that they plan on adding a battery manufacturing plant, more room for Cybertruck manufacture, and the infrastructure to help all of that function more smoothly. This isn't even Tesla's first permission for this area. Tesla applied for a new 500,000 square foot general assembly area, which in architectural worlds signifies a multi-purpose factory space in June 2022. Because that kind of zoning would preclude things like battery building, it was anticipated that this would be for the Cybertruck and an expansion of the conventional Model Y and 3 lines, essentially an add-on facility to support specific anticipated development. The new file appears to reframe the prior one, indicating a shift in the scope of work expected from Tesla's Texas site. The development will add 1.4 million square feet of space distributed across four towers. For the time being, Cell 1 is the largest of these, measuring 693,000 square feet and costing approximately $368 million. Given its scale, this structure will likely replace the one initially disclosed in the 2022 filings. Of course, both are possible at the table but it's improbable given the size that Tesla appears to be aiming for. The drive unit, an $85 million facility, is the second structure. Again, there is no additional information, but it's easy to guess that this 423,032 square feet structure will house a production line that creates exactly what it says on the pin. Following that, we finally obtained some validation and battery creations with cathode building. This structure refers to the cathode production plant that Tesla applied for in February 2022 and broke ground in August of that year. The fact that the filing appears in this batch suggests that some changes are being made to the plans. For example, a new connection with another structure, a size adjustment, or underground work may be required. That brings us to the final structure, known as the cell test lab. This much smaller facility, measuring only 2,560 square feet, will cost Tesla $3.7 million. This coffee shop-sized facility is likely to be precisely what it says. Labs usually require little room, but the specialist utilities are likely to have increased the cost. Moreover, as previously stated, this is the only one that supersedes previous filings, such as the one for the General Assembly building in 2022. A filing in December 2022 for a 174,878 square foot plastic building is reportedly still in progress. Still, without knowing any more, it's difficult to believe that Tesla could be making such a large investment of money and space and still thinking of making a general use building right now. In true Tesla form, construction on these buildings will begin within the new few weeks and last until 2024. This corresponds to the increase in manufacturing of the Cybertruck batteries and other models mentioned by Tesla at their shareholder meeting last year. As a result, these filings are expected to be the final ones before construction begins. Filings are also useful for cutting through ambiguity. It's one thing to hear Tesla talk about their ambitions for Giga Texas expansion over the last few years. It's another to see a legal notice stating that they'd like to break ground. Filings can only occur once the buildings have been designed and drafted, and a contractor has been selected to begin construction. That's why it always feels so swift when Tesla gets from paperwork to breaking ground in a matter of days. It's also excellent to have the assurance that Tesla will move battery manufacture on site, as promised. In addition, we know they're still collaborating with partners to satisfy the demand for their new 4680 cells. For example, Panasonic is establishing at least one new battery production plant in the United States this year. However, CEO Elon Musk has long stated that if the firm can handle it, it can wean itself off of outside assistance. And this would be the first significant step towards this type of expansion. In addition to the Model Y production ramp-up, 
getting Cybertruck production up and running this year necessitated a facility expansion. These papers indicate that Tesla is attempting to adhere to the schedule established at their most recent shareholder meeting. One final warning for Tesla fans, filings aren't fixed in stone. They can and frequently alter based on whether a corporation changes the scale of the building or the design or runs into issues during construction. So keep an eye on the construction site because action there over the next few weeks will tell us exactly what's happening. Last January 20th, a new design of Tesla supercharging stations that appeared to be CCS compliant was leaked on Tesla's mobile app. The so-called Magic Dock design appeared as did a filter allowing drivers to search for CCS-equipped Tesla locations and the location of the first of these stations, Hawthorne, California. The image shows a larger charger head, presumably CCS compatible, allowing vehicles other than Teslas to use the EV giant's more than 40,000 charging stations. Also, Tesla will need to meet the standards for impending government grants designed to incentivize investment in green infrastructure. The image is a touch dark, but drive Tesla brighten it up little. And there it is, the bigger charge head is pronounced and looks a lot like the European CCS2 capable ones. While the image may have been altered in the app by accident, it has already been removed. It is also no secret that Tesla was working on solutions to this problem, promising the White House that they would strive to alter their superchargers so that they could service competitors' vehicles. The White House stated in July 2022 that Tesla has agreed to adopt their technology in this manner, which appears to be what this magical dock will entail, which makes sense given that North America is one of many continents pressing Tesla to make such modifications. Europe has also made a similar demand, and the company's use of non-Tesla superchargers mirrors what we're seeing with this leak. In addition, the improvements to the images and the addition of a filter in the Tesla app allows drivers to search for CCS-compliant stations. The combined charging system CCS is the current standard for North American electric vehicles, while Tesla has been pushing to update that standard with their charger design, that effort would likely take time. Now, thank you for reaching this point. Make sure to finish this video to know more. But before we continue, don't forget to subscribe if you are new to this channel. And like, comment, share, and hit the notification bell for more upcoming videos like this. For the time being, it appears that Tesla is prepared to do what it did in Europe by introducing CCS-compliant charging stations and opening its service stations to all EV drivers. However, while the changes were swiftly withdrawn from the app, they appeared to be finished. As a result, the official announcement is likely just around the horizon. Starlink's primary goal of bringing the internet to the world's most remote locations has reached a new milestone as researchers in Antarctica report that the satellite system is performing admirably. On January 21st, a tweet from field researcher Peter Neff reached us from the bitter cold of Antarctica, informing us the testing of Starlink is being conducted by the, both the Center for Oldest Ice Exploration and the American National Science Foundation's McMurdo Station, one of the continent's most populated areas. It's extremely tough to keep Antarctica connected to the outside world, Experiments and data are typically carried out on boats or planes while supplies are brought in, so contact has historically been challenging to sustain. This is where Starlink comes in. In September 2022, SpaceX stated that Starlink was operational in Antarctica and ready for testing as part of the National Science Foundation's first experiment. After demonstrating its utility, the NSF began a second testing phase with the Center for Oldest Ice Exploration Coldex in December 2022. Because of the optical interlink devices included in all Starlink V1.5 satellites, Starlink can provide stable internet access to Antarctic stations because there are few Starlink terminals in Antarctica. They employ lasers to connect the polar orbiting satellites to the Earth add to the fact that there are now only 181 polar orbiting Starlink satellites, and you can see that the link is stable but intermittent. The Starlink constellation occasionally goes dark as it moves out of range. Still, it's better than anything they've had before. 
Experts such as Peter Neff are thrilled to see what this new era in communications technologies may accomplish to connect incredibly isolated locations such as Antarctica. A high-speed link such as the one provided by Starlink is handy for interacting with other scientists handling samples from the frozen continent. Coldex, for example, investigates ancient ice buried beneath the Antarctic shelf in search of information that could aid in developing climate change solutions. Physical samples require some time to be flown or booted out, but being able to communicate reasonably large packets of research data back and forth is extremely helpful to isolated researchers. SpaceX expects to have as many as 520 polar orbiting Starlinks operational within the next year or so, making the connection more consistent. But for the time being, the scientists on the other side of the planet are content to send us photographs. And that's it. Thank you for watching. What do you think of these updates? Let me know in the comments section down below. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to this channel to be updated for upcoming videos like this. Before you leave, did you know what it's like inside Elon Musk's Neuralink Neural Factory? If you want to know more, make sure to click and watch this video here. See you there!